Hello, I'm Shaylee. I'm sharing this video with you for my family and culture course I'm taking through ASU. In this video, I'll be talking about parenting styles, how parents and children affect one another, and how parenting and childhood is a social construction. The purpose of sharing about these topics is one, to educate, and two, to build empathy. I'm the oldest of six kids, and I've been a professional nanny for the last five years. Even though I do not have my own children, I know that raising kids is one of the hardest jobs and one that, that does not get enough recognition and support. So if you're a parent or someone helping raise children, just know that you are valued and I want to say thank you for all your hard work. All right, let's dive in. I want to talk about how parenting and childhood is a social construction. What does that mean? Well, how we define parenting and childhood is influenced and shaped by time, place, and social location. So how we parent ebbs and flows based on what is happening in society and the cultures within it. Parents today have a different approach to raising their kids compared to 50 years ago. And parents in another country will raise their kids differently than parents in America. This is important because what seems right for you and your family may not be the case for another. And instead of being quick to judge, we should ask ourselves what factors are influencing what and why something is happening. Something else to keep in mind is that besides conception, giving birth, and nursing an infant, there are no biological factors to parenting. When it comes to childhood, children today have more leisure time and time away from their families. They participate in organized activities and are surrounded by innovations and technology. They're, they are more likely to have fewer siblings and experience the parents' divorce. They have their own bedrooms and travel with their parents. They participate in the commerce market dedicated to them. Kids today have huge differences in their upbringing compared to a century ago, all which is influenced by what is happening in society. Even with the strong influence of society, parents have the control over their parenting styles. Parenting style is determined by the patterns of parental authority. This is measured by the level of demandingness and responsiveness to children. Demandingness is the extent to which parents exert control, power, supervision, and set limits with their children. Responsiveness is the extent to which parents show their children effective warmth, acceptance, support, and reasoning. Now, let's talk about the different parenting styles. Controlling parenting, also known as authoritarian parenting, is characterized by a high level of demandingness and a low level of responsiveness. These parents are strict with their kids and focus on discipline rather than nurturing. Guiding parenting, also known as authoritative parenting, is characterized by high levels of demandingness and high levels of responsiveness. These parents use a mixture of controlling practices that are not restrictive with a positive encouragement for autonomy and independence towards children. Even though controlling parents also assert direction over their children's behavior, guiding parents acknowledge their children's feelings and explain their reasons for their directing behavior, such as setting rules and regulations. Controlling parents do not. Next, we have indulging parents. When these parents exhibit low levels of demandingness and high levels of responsiveness, indulging parents are tolerant, warm, and accepting but they exercise little authority, make few behavior demands, and allow considerable self-regulation by, <laughs> by their children. While this seems more positive, this type does not allow for guidelines and enforcement necessary for effective parenting. Last, we have neglecting parenting. When parents engage in low levels of demandingness and low levels of responsiveness, Neglecting parents let their children have their way because they do not want to get involved, nor do they monitor, guide, or support their children. They are preoccupied with their own problems and are disengaged from parental responsibilities. Now, I know that may seem like a lot of information to remember, so let's recap. We have controlling parenting, which is high levels of demandingness and low levels of responsiveness. Guiding parenting, which is high levels of demandingness and high levels of responsiveness. Indulging parenting, which is low levels of demandingness and high levels of responsiveness. Neglecting parenting, which is low levels of demandingness and low levels of responsiveness. Which of these parenting styles describes how you interact with your children? 
It's important to understand these concepts because each has a different effect on children's behavior, risk-taking, mental health, and academic achievement. Controlling parenting associated with increasing both externalizing and internalizing problems in children compared to other parenting styles. Externalizing behaviors are those dealing with aggression, attention problems, and hyperactivity, whereas internalizing behaviors concern depression, withdrawal, and anxiety. Controlling parenting is also negatively associated with peer acceptance and the ability to use social skills appropriately. This increased aggression, decreased self-esteem, and decreased sociability found in children of controlling parents shows the harmfulness of this parenting style. Children guiding parents has the most positive effect overall compared to the other styles. Children of guiding parents are self-reliant and self-controlled, which helps them avoid making impulsive decisions resulting in negative behaviors. These kids are less likely to engage in substance abuse than children with controlling parents. In school, these kids are more engaged and more successful, successful because of their parents' involvement in their educations. Children with indulging parents are disengaged from school and show a higher frequency of involvement in deviant behaviors. Neglecting parenting is associated with unfavorable outcomes such as high rates of depression, high rates of smoking, poor school achievement, and low psychosocial development. All these are consequences for how we interact with our children and their biological and socially influenced reactions and impulses. I hope you all consider these when you go forth parenting. Naturally, when you parent, your children will also affect you. If you're married or in a partnership of some form and you have children, then you may understand some of these effects. Studies have shown that couples were their happiest before they had kids. Having kids can add stress, conflict, and decline in marital satisfaction. Marital stability is great the first five years of marriage, but having young kids causes couples to spend less alone time together and to disagree more. When children reach adolescence, parents no longer carry the positive child relationship they previously had, but instead see declines in the closeness with their kids and an increase in disagreements about them. However, marital happiness increases after kids move out of the home. Now, obviously, this is not the case for everyone, but for some of you, it could be. And with that said, it's extremely important for parents to have strong communication skills with each other and to build them with their kids. A very important factor to communicate with your spouse, partner, or co-parent is how to discipline the child. Now, there are many ways to go about this. A controlling parent may use physical punishments to, enfor to enforce compliance, or a guiding parent may use setting boundaries and talking with their children. An indulging parent could ignore the issue and focus on something else, and a neglectful parent would not do anything at all. There are many ways to discipline kids, and studies have shown that timeouts and ignoring the child gets more compliance than praise. But does that mean we should isolate our children for not responding in a way that we wanted? Whether you use this method or not, there are positive and negative outcomes for it, and you have to decide which option for discipline you'll choose. From my experience as a nanny, I know children respond the best to structure, boundaries, a stern voice, but always offering love and compassion because it's not the responsibility of, the, of young kids to be in control of their feelings, let alone ours. Impulse control does not develop in the brain until after the fifth year of life. With its stress, raising children is an amazing opportunity to be shaped, loved, and even led by the kids in our lives. Kids have a perspective on this world that is so valuable, and I believe children deserve our respect and love just like we want theirs. Well, we've come to the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed the information I shared about parenting styles, how children and parents affect each other, and the social construction of parenting and childhood. I hope you go forth making educated decisions when parenting and interacting with children and other adults. I know that I'll be taking this knowledge in my workday as a nanny. Please leave suggestions and any questions or thoughts you have. If you like hearing me talk about parenting and child development, then leave that in the comments as well. I may make more videos in the future. I'm eager to respond to all comments as that is part of my grade, so please leave one. Once again, I'm Shaylee and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!